right, so, yeah, let's, I'm gonna open Batman Who Laughs Rising. So, I, I guess let's talk about who is your favorite Batman, or Batman character, actor, portrayer, or even any of the other characters from Batman that you've seen in the media. Yeah, keeping it simple is probably easiest for me, especially while streaming. Because otherwise I'll get stuck on the name every time. <laughs> so, supposedly this includes full color custom sculpted figures. Um, actual size that big, so we'll see just what it shows up to be. So this is from the Op Games. They've done a lot of games based off of IPs lately. Uh, it says ages 15 and up, one to four players, plays in about 60 minutes. So, it has a solo mode. It means I can play it alone. So that may be either this weekend or on an upcoming stream I can show it off. So, of course, we got a rule book up right on top. Nice and dark artwork. So, this may not be kid-friendly today as I stream. If this is the type of art we're going to be looking at. <laughs> very bloody, very violent so a good table of contents shows what components we should expect to see in here which is always helpful when verifying that everything came in the box the right way if you like to do that or when you're setting up at a later time making sure you're not missing components oh nice a full full double page setup instructions listed so it looks pretty straightforward on seeing how to set it up. So you can either see the artwork or read through how to do it, which I enjoy. And it t has the solo variant setup rules right here. Instead of waiting to the end of the book or the rules. Because so I don't like, oh, reading all this to set it up as a solo. And then getting to the end and be like, oh, no, you shouldn't have done that. You should have done this different. Now I can see right here it will be different in some way, which is helpful. So game gameplay, it's going to talk over. I like how it kind of marks out different things on here, so it's pretty clear. Um, all the text is pretty easy to read, step by step, which will be nice to learn the game when I get to that point. Kind of tells you what the end of the game is here. More icon, uh, icon examples. Excuse me. Uh, okay, so extra rules and going over them for clarification is always helpful. And then gameplay variants. So, and then showing you what's on the die themselves. So that, that's helpful to know because a lot of people, well, not necessarily like card counting or, or trying to figure out all the exact um, variabilities of things like you like to know in general what you're likely to get so you can plan while you're playing so it's not just pure luck okay so the first piece of cardboard non rule book is it looks like the, that mid game board it, it showed off nice artwork on the bottom side even though you're not going to see it while playing always nice that it's not just plain colored that they actually went use the artwork as much as they could. See another a tile. It looks like possibly places to put cubes. Very straightforward in, in the way it's laid out. Easy to read text. Well, we we can't ignore this miniature right here. That is honking. Uh, yeah, I got to change view for this. Show off this miniature. Full color. Three, I guess, Robins and a Batman. Actual chains that are loose. I don't know if that bottom one's supposed to have gotten stuck around that. Like it's almost looks like it's choking that back one. If it were just got pushed around. 
But yeah, there's a lot of detail in that. Nice, nicely molded. Definitely one of the nicest miniature figures I've seen in a game in a while. Most of the time you get the sol solid color. It's pretty small, but you get several of them. This is a lot of work has gone into not only the design, but just the manufacturing of this itself and the quality to make sure. And I believe based on what I saw in the rule book, it basically sits right here in the middle of the game board, possibly, possibly turning and pointing in different directions. But that is a good four to five inches tall. Probably at least three inches o overall width. So a nice size to it. Okay, let's switch back to, and see what else is in the box. Okay, so we got some bags of cubes. Classic clear resin cubes. Got some yellows, got some reds. Kind of what you expect. Kind of about the same size and clarity as what you might see in Pandemic and in those types of games. Nice little pop at the table when being used. Better than just a solid color. I do like that they made them transparent. So there's a bigger bag of red than the yellow. And then we get to the dice. I will switch view so we can show off the dice under the other camera. So y'all can get some more detail on it. First off, we had this black die. Okay, that's showing pretty good. So... I would assume when you roll this, the number on it is how many cubes, potentially the yellow cubes, that are added. Um, and then based on the back of that the rule book, we, we know the distribution of the dive. Um, it looks like this all these dice are variants to the game. So it may not actually be used in the main part of the game, but there's one, several ones, some, several twos, and a zero on that. In the distribution as you see. Then we got some of these other colored die. Let's see how many we have of each. So we got three of these kind of greenish. It's kind of a, a very muted green to that. But kind of looks like a what is that the Wonder Woman symbol? Possibly Green Lantern. I don't know all the symbols very well, so I'll probably get some of these wrong. You can tell me if I'm wrong. But, so, but there's some different ones you can see. Of course, we got a bat symbol on there too. Can't have a Batman game without the bat symbol somewhere. And this, we have a really dark purple background to it. Thing is, even though they're darker muted colors, the ink catches the light so it does shine a bit as you can tell uh, yeah it just looks like the distribution of these symbols are different on each of these colors because we got now we have this yellow more of a, a muted a, kind of a muted mustard and then we actually have six of these reds Assuming some, since it's a variant. Oh, yeah. 15 total die. So I guess there's just supposed to be more of the reds. Oh, and here's the last die. There's another black die. This, this one and the first black are a bit bigger. Uh, these are probably about standard size die, maybe slightly bigger. These are definitely bigger than standard die. Now let's see what kind of cards we got in this box. So we have cards and then we have some cardboard. Oh, and stuff on the cardboard. Oh, it keeps going. I'm gonna bust it all out. Lay it out so y'all can see, see stuff while I'm opening the cards. 
like that dark purple background on that artwork. Okay. Uh, so yeah, let's go with this. Oh, that's a package of looks like cards or player cardboard or boards. I'll set those aside. Open. Let's go over these real quick. Okay, so these are double-sided, yellow, and purple. Um, they look like they have different effects on them, but it's pretty very easy to read based on the color choices. So I like the contrast in colors; makes it easy to read. Even on this yellow, that white pops. So they've done a good job on making sure everything is legible, easy to read text, both in color choice and in the actual text that they're using the the font both the size and type of font is very nice in that put those with that other board we found earlier we got some tokens uh, yeah these are probably small enough I can switch to the other view again let me know if you don't like me switching back and forth between the views and just want me to use one for everything like to give you all a chance to see everything as I see it as best I can. So these tokens don't have as much artwork on the back. A, a little bit, not just plain, but you know, it does look like the color of the face matches the back. And then we got some different, looks like effect style tokens. Some of the different symbols. Like this one is like negative two, it has that explosive explosion symbol from one hero I'm assuming that's that's health or damage in this game uh, so you got and then you got stuff like negative one red cube from the Dark Knights track different colored cube symbols on these um, don't know if they're player based or no those should be die colors and let me try to open the cards real quick. So, if you've been here with me before, you know I always like to check and then verify, do the card packs have a quick release, quick open? Because that's important to not damage the cards. And JC says, what do we have here? Yeah, so I am currently opening the Batman Who Laughs Rising game. And probably the first thing that, one of the first things we pulled out of the box after this, the rule book was this very detailed miniature. I'll put that so y'all can see it there. So yeah, we're showing off all the things in the box. Just doing a general unboxing chat. How was your week? Oh, you think your local game store has it? Nice. So you streamed Boss Monster yesterday. It was super fun. Well, I'm glad that was that was fun for you. Um, that's a game I really enjoy. Um, very simple tile selection game, straightforward, but a, not, a lot of different combos you can do with the different tiles that you have in the game. That's a good choice. Yeah, so th this, these decks do not have a quick release on them, so bear that in mind. Um, I did have to take a knife to the edge of the plastic. So let's take a look at these cards. So first off, we have the back of them. Let's see how many different backs we have. So as we already kind of brought up, this artwork is kind of bloody, violent, definitely not intended to be kid-friendly. Uh, we did say the game was for, what was the ages on it again? 15 and up, so there's your answer right there. It's not for kids. Watch out with that knife, young man. Use your boycott boy boy skills. Boy Scout, I know what you meant. Uh, I was actually never a Boy Scout, but I did grow up camping doing a lot of that. Always point the knife away from yourself, stuff like that. So let's see what's in the smaller stack. All, all of these were the same back, so we know they're the same setup. So we have a murder machine. We have the Dawnbreaker. The Red Death. The Drowned. The Merciless. The Devastator. And the Batman Who Laughs. 
Of course, you have to have a card that has the name of the game. Somehow. Somewhere. So, I'd have to look up and verify if maybe these are kind of counted as the villains of who you're trying to defeat while you're playing. Um, and these represent total things you need to roll or something. Or maybe those are cards that represent yourself. And these other cards are... We'll see what happens. So now we get to the other types of cards. Again, I don't know how this plays. Don't know much about it beyond just opening it right now. So what I see, what I read, is all I know about it. Okay, so yeah, we got a lot of different artwork on these upcoming cards. We'll just kind of show off several of them. So of course, we had the Wonder Woman symbol, so we had to have Wonder Woman. And then we got Superman and the Flash. So of course, we're being DC, we got to see a lot of the different heroes. Cyborg. Plastic Man. I have not heard of Plastic Man, but seems interesting, at least with the artwork. Deathstroke. Nice how they got the reflection of the Batman who laughs in the the weapon right there. That's a really good way to take a st the artwork a step farther. Red, Red Tornado. Dream of the Endless. Not sure who that is, but I can always look up more. And of course, we have to have Batman. Always Batman. And without and with Batman by his side, you're gonna find Robin. You may occasionally find Nightwing hanging out. And of course, with the Joker around, there's gonna be Harley Quinn somewhere. And even in that we have Batgirl and Duke Thomas. We have a Red Hood, Constantine, and there's a Green Lantern. I knew I saw that symbol. Clayface, Green Arrow, here's Aquaman, Hawkman, and we found the Joker. Mr. Terrific. Martian Manhunter. Hang on. Blah, blah, blah. Martian Manhunter. I spoke too fast. Too. And then we got a hot girl. And of course, with Batman, you need the Commissioner. Commissioner Gordon himself. And he's going to control some of those GCPD officers. Uh, Z Zatanna. Blue Beetle. Dr. Fate, James Gordon Jr., Alfred Pennywise, Evil Robins, there we go, there's the, the ones from the model right here, we have Evil Robins, another one, another photo, nice how they did different artwork for each one, we have the Court of Owls, uh, again, Court of Owls, but with different artwork, which is really nice that they've done all different artwork for every single one of these cards, even when, in theory, they have the same name. Uh, we got Strigde. I probably said that wrong. You can correct me. Um, let me know if you know who, who or what this character is, because we also have two of those cards in play. So let's get this other deck opened up and again like I said this does not have a quick release tab on it at all so we have to be super careful not to cut these cards as we get into this plastic see if I can loosen it, that plastic at all and that's why that I keep the tip of my knife the sharpest because that is most critical to not mess with these cards See if I can get this edge at all. Come on. That knife is sharp enough you can get right between two cards as you slice into that plastic. Nice on the edge, and I believe I just caught it just right.
Okay. And you get to sit here and watch me struggle to open a deck of cards, essentially. There we go. Okay, let's see what we got here. So, uh, I guess... I'd assume these are player boards, essentially, but they're cards. So, on one side of them we have our turn order. So, very clear steps. There are ten steps laid out, though. Hopefully, they're quick and easy steps so it doesn't make your turn feel super long and have other people waiting on you. But we have the power team. Um, so it's a, so these are starting ability cards. I wonder if the the whole team uses it or if it's a single player. But the team leader in this is Wonder Woman. I kind of uh, almost wonder if this these are only used in the variants because it talks about the dice being variants to the gameplay. And then we have the Purpose team with led by Green Lantern. We have the Justice team. Uh, led by Hawk Girl, and then of course we have the Determination Team with Batman because of course Batman is so determined. Yeah, so that is all the pieces from the game. Um, if you have, if you want to see something more specific, I'm more happy to bring it back into view, talk about it, look up anything for you, or we might actually have time to open another of the games I had in line ready tonight. Let me know what you prefer. Oh, that's what I didn't show off, show you yet. So, of course, you probably kind of saw it as I pulled things out. But the game, the box insert. Um, three basic squares, two with thumb holes, so you can tell where cards go. You have the miniature space. So if it all goes back in the way I pulled it out, you're not going to have things flying around. You're not going to have it mixing up. So it is a decently designed insert with bags for most of the loose components, which is nice. I believe these were in this bag. Yeah, so most of the white dye had a bag there in this slot here that big miniature spot here these cubes and their bags went there all of these chits were, already, were as you saw were already punched out did not have to punch anything and they already had their own ziploc bag too which is very nice so i did not have to pull any bags of my own Those were sitting down into this. I'll check in a second. So I do remember these bigger team cards are at the bottom of this. I think that was down there with it. All the regular cards had their spot in the top left of the box. So there is a slight concern how loose that would be right there. But, of course, you could throw something on top of it so you know they're not going to tilt out and have a couple slide out away from you. Which is what I will do with my set. All of these are on top. Now, granted, remember, at least one of those has popped up and slid before. But even this insert is formed for this to sit down into it a little bit. So as long as you, you're, you're storing this stuff tight together, you shouldn't have anything falling out very easily. So that was the Batman Who Laughs Rising. So definitely interested trying this game out. It says it's a co-op game to save the multiverse. Of course, anytime you're fighting against Joker and have Batman, you're, it's to save the whole multiverse, not just Gotham. And we said it was ages 15 and up, one to four players, about 60 minutes from the op. Okay, so I think what I want to do next, since we've already talked about supposedly how good the game is, because someone else in the chat has played, uh, 
the Love Meeples said they really enjoyed it when they played it. Okay, so let's do our shake test on Batman, since we didn't do that a while ago. So we got a regular shake. Shake upside down, sideways. Turn it, flip it, flip it, roll it. This is not bop it, so we won't go do that. But we got our shake, we got our throw, we got our turns. Now this is a tight fitted box as well. We got that top, top on here. So again, this is the only thing that seemed to move and be an issue. One of these boards from this top edge right here gets under the this and slides around. Um, and then of course that would make this looser over time. But the rest of this bagged up, no true issues that I can see with that. So overall, happy enough with that insert. I may have made that section for these slightly deeper or changed it in a way that they're not as likely to slide out. Like this box is probably pretty close to deep enough to set, yeah, they could have set on their side somehow. That would have been the one minor change I would make. But overall, can't complain about the game. It looks amazing. Look, the artwork seemed amazing. Looking forward to trying that out.